Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Saturday. Hope you're enjoying the weekend. We got a little uh, treat for you here on Saturdays, as we like to do an abbreviated version of Fearless with Jason Whitlock. You, you know, we put together 90 minutes, two hours for you during the week. We just got a little treat for you uh, over the weekend just to get you through the weekend. Delano Squires is going to join me on this special uh, edition, the Saturday edition of Fearless. We're going to talk about all the pandering that's going on as it relates to the trans issue. We've got Hershey's Candy Bar pandering. We've got the Toronto Raptors apologizing for a video uh, that says women have babies and oh, they forgot, they left out that, oh yeah, now men can have babies too. And the Toronto Raptors pulled down the advertisement or the commercial that was in celebration of Women's History Month, I think. And then finally, Delano kind of pulled things together. He wrote a piece for Friday about uh, Professor Mark Lamont Hill, the former CNN contributor, the you know, podcaster, kind of popular. He doubled down again via Twitter about that men can get pregnant or trans men can get pregnant, they're women too. And, and it just kind of all ties together that all this trans craziness is rooted at the academic level. That it's the academic class that is pushing this insanity that we're seeing everywhere. And so I want to play the clip of the, I think we have the Hershey's commercial that's promoting this transgender woman or transgender candy bar. Let's uh, watch the Hershey's commercial. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. We can create a world where everyone is able to live in public space as their honest and authentic selves. See the woman changing how we see the future at Hershey's Canada. Hershey's Canada. And, and the, what, what really baffles me about all of this is I just can't imagine the transgender community being more than 1% of the overall population, but they feel like 75% of the conversation. I, I, I just don't get it, but I, I guess it's because that's where our educational institutions have focused all of the attention. Uh, and so a, a candy bar, how, how does, does this whole transgender thing, you think that's gonna help them sell more candy bars? Well, Jason, I'm, I'm really not sure why these companies are doing this. Maybe this was Hershey's way to signal silently that this candy bar has nuts um, for people who may have some sort of <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it, it, maybe maybe that was their way of saying it without saying it. But but honestly, there's it, a couple things here. One, this is clear, and I I wrote this for for a piece a couple you know a couple weeks back. Um, the revolution has been corporatized, and conservatives, and and even sort of reasonable, you know, center left liberals need to understand that the notion that tyranny can only come through the government is a very 1980s type of position. Uh, these corporations um, take on every sort of social justice movement. They, they power it with money. They slap their logos on it. Obviously, every June is Pride Month. So you get queer beer and you get you know, Pride Night at, at every stadium. And, and this is a way to for the corporations to insulate themselves from the type of criticism that comes from, you know, traditional old school, uh, you know, socialists, communists, Marxists. Because Jason, as you know, even with the BLM stuff, the, 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 the women who, co who co-founded this organization say that they are vowed Marxists. But they have no problem taking the money from from Warner Brothers, taking the money from uh, politicians, taking, you know, money from, um, you know, the NBA and the NFL or having their movement be supported by these by these large multinational corporations. So th this is to your point. This is a way to pander to an extremely small part of the population. 
And the reason that it's safe to do so is because they understand that very few people outside of people like us are going to be willing to speak up in, in public to criticize what they're doing. They understand that the, the so-called trans community um, is the new protected class and, and they know that they can appeal to this community and really appeal to people outside of that community by saying, look, we're good allies with very little chance that they're going to get a backlash um, because they know that women are not going to say anything. That's clear, right? They know that women are not going to say anything. And they know that a good number of the men who don't agree with this, who, who hear the bass in, in this, this dude's voice and understand, oh, that's a man. He could put the septum ring, he can color his hair red, he could put on fake eyelashes, but that's a dude. But they know that most of the guys are not going to say anything because they're too scared. So it's very little downside for these companies. Um, and I think that's one of the big reasons that they're pushing this, this, the, this particular ideology with so much force. So let's take the big, tough NBA professional athletes. The Toronto <laughs> Raptors put together a video pandering mm. to women, and mm. they might as well have all just come out and say, Yas, queen, yas, queen, Stacey Abrams, you the bomb. They, they just, they just, but they didn't. It, it, let, let's play the video, and I'm telling you, when I first saw it, it just, I was like, what are they apologizing for? But, but let's play the video. Girls run the world because they're the only one that can procreate. They birth everybody. All women are great because they're all queens. So literally, I just thought, I was like, okay, they're just pandering to women. Girls run the world and all women are queens mm. and blah, blah, blah. So the stuff they really don't believe because as soon as the camera went off, trust me, they put some rap music on and, and it was bees and hoes everywhere. But... Mm. They had to apologize over, you know, basically saying women can have babies and that, that could, that's what makes them special and queens and why they run the world. I don't understand why the athletes are playing along with this. So there's a couple of things, Jason. When I saw that video, um, I said, these guys must have gotten off the, uh, the not as fast bus. I don't want to call it the slow bus, but this, this was not a, a particularly, you know, articulate explanation of why they're celebrating Women's History Month. But that being said, as, as boring and as dry as it was, I wasn't sure, and I tweeted this yesterday, I wasn't sure whether they were apologizing because the Raptors wants to be, want to be inclusive of, quote unquote, you know, uh, I guess these would be trans men, right? So females who identify as men, um, I don't know if they were trying to be inclusive of that community, or if they're apologizing because the players were trying, were basically being reductive in terms of what women do and can accomplish, right? So obviously they wouldn't apologize if they said, you know, women are great, they can do anything men can do, but better, they run teams, um, uh, you know, we have a female vice president, so on and so they, they wouldn't apologize if they spoke to the role that women play in the workplace. But when they speak to the, wor the role that women play in creation, then you have a problem because the left sees that as, as I said, reductive in terms of what women can do and can accomplish. But this is what I, I tweeted yesterday. The stadium that the Raptors play in, their arena, is guaranteed that it was built by men from the foundation to the roof, to the stands. All of it was built by men, if not exclusively, then certainly primarily. But every single person that fills that stadium was born of a woman. Now, in our culture, people are going to have problems with both of those statements for different reasons, but both of them are true. But if I said that women built up some particular industry, everybody would say, oh, yes, yo, that's so great. Women are, are bosses and can run the world. But when you speak to biological reality, that women have the exclusive privilege of bringing forth life, now people start to get offended. And, th and that's because, and I've said this often, the, the, the North Star for feminism, it's true North, how it measures and calibrates its compass is by looking at whatever men are doing. Feminists hate being women, and, and they hate being women, I'll just, I'll just say that, um, 
And it is an ideology meant to destroy sexism, but really what it destroys is femininity and, and all of the things that women are exclusively capable of doing. And all of that, I want to circle it around to the column you wrote on Friday. All of it is emanating, coming from the theological or the uh, theoretical, the mm -hmm. backbone, the foundation of this argument is all coming from academia, our alleged mm -hmm. smartest people uh, in America, smartest people in the world. And, and they're really the dumbest. And, and Mark Lamont Hill, I think he's a professor at Temple, uh, former contributor at CNN, and, and, and all, all I can really think about is when uh, the, the scripture, the, the scripture where, you know, thinking themselves smart. Correct. They've given over to reprobate minds and, and they've made mm. fools of themselves. Mm -hmm. you, you abandon God and so, but, but the, it's, I was reading your piece and like, yeah, Delano, make sure you homeschool your kids and don't let them go to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, so, so what happened this week on, on, on Twitter is that for some reason, the clip of, of Mark Lamont Hill talking with Candace Owens a few years ago um, started to go around. I guess it went viral or semi-viral. And she basically asked him a very simple question. Can she men said, get Can pregnant? Men... There uh, it, it is. Depends. I know, I know, what does it I, depend on? I know trans men that can get pregnant. That, that means it's a woman. Only one sex can well, get that's pregnant. That's a circular argument. That's it's not a circular the argument. Yeah. It's proving my thing. There is a truth, a concrete truth. You have to be born with a uterus to have a baby. Only women can get pregnant. The fact that we've arrived in a society right. where that's the part I'm disagreeing with. That's the part I'm disagreeing There's with. There's nothing to disagree with. It. These are facts. So you can say that this person who is pregnant identifies as a man. That person was born a woman. I can tell you that every single time because only women can have sex because there are concrete truths about life. He doubled down on that. He did. And he's and, a college and, and professor. He, and, he, and he tripled down on Twitter when he, he acknowledged, he said, oh, it looks like my, my heavily edited, you know, conversation with Candace Owens is going viral for some reason. And he said, yes, I, I believe what I believe, that, that some men can get pregnant, that trans men can get pregnant. And, and, and I, the point of my column is that even though people like Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union are the most visible P in, in of the five P's in the aristocracy, right? The politicians, the pundits, the professors, the preachers, and the performers. The performers are the most visible, but the most dangerous are the professors. And they're dangerous because they give legitimacy to some of the most reckless and destructive ideas that emanate in our culture. And what I said in the piece is that if, if, the, if the notion that men could get pregnant started on the shop floor of the Jiffy Lube, nobody would take it seriously. If, if, if it started um, in, in the back room at a, at a you know, in a player's lounge at a, at a baseball game, no one would take it seriously. If it started, if it got started by some farmhand in Iowa, no one would take it seriously. But, but, but when someone says, I have a PhD from an Ivy League school and I studied you know, sociology and anthropology and all these other subjects that most people have never even heard of, that what comes with them is an air of authority and legitimacy. And especially when you can, you can point to, again, the fact that you graduated from Harvard or Yale or Penn or Morehouse or Howard, then people will say, they'll say, oh, wow, well, this person must know what they're talking about. And particularly in our community, where so many parents push their children, particularly their female children, their girls, onto higher education, where for a long time, um, you know, the more educated black folk did occupy a particular space, right? The talented tent, that notion. We look to these people for guidance and they have completely led us astray. And people like, and I talked about Mark Lamont Hill, Michael Eric Dyson, who dismisses the importance of fathers on MSNBC and begs white folk for reparations on Fox. I talk about your best friend, Brittany Cooper, who, who, who says that she's glad that the nuclear family has gone the way of the floppy disk. I talk about Greg Carr, a professor of Africana studies at Howard University, who says that women leaving Texas for more civilized states to seek abortions 
are basically no different, are basically channeling the spirit of the Underground Railroad. And I talk about uh, Carl Hart, a professor of, of pharmacology and psychology at Columbia University, a heroin user who, in the midst of a record uptick in drug overdose deaths, writes an op-ed saying he uses heroin and he thinks other people should use heroin and hard drugs and narcotics are not that bad. And he had written one previously where he said he, he would rather his children interact with hard drugs than the police. This is, this is the professory, the black intellectual class, the progressive black intellectual class today. And this is why these people are agents of, of intellectual destruction and moral compromise. I, I, I got to be careful, but I, I've got family members that <laughs> young family members that are doing very well academically. And I had a discussion with another family member because they were talking about, I think Harvard or Yale was recruiting one of my young relatives. And, and, and she goes to a Catholic high school and mm. she's doing very well. And, and I, I said, I was like, hmm, so she's doing well at a Catholic high school, a, re a religious academic institution. Why send her to one of these secular schools and have all the God stripped out of her uh, at one of these Ivy League schools? Why do that? Why mm. not keep her, why not send her to a, a religious school? She, great student, she, you know. Why, why are we gonna send our kids off? Let's send them to the devil's playpen so they can learn all this crazy stuff when they're yeah. excelling at the high school level. And I, you know, I, I want to be careful here. <laughs> I gotta, but you know, I had a nephew that uh, I have a nephew that did very well at a prestigious Catholic high school, and and you know, I would have voted to send him to a religious school in college. It's not what happen. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a mistake. I, 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 I really am to the point, and your column was like the final nail in the coffin, like, I think I'm anti-college. I, mm. I, I really am, because I, 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 I think I'm, unless you're going off to some religious university that actually sticks to the doctrine, because mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. of them don't, <laughs> I'm not for, and, and you know, I saw, I think I, saw, I thought you commented too this week, someone was going after Matt Walsh's credentials because he's not, yeah. he's, doesn't, he doesn't have a college degree. And, Correct. and I was sitting Correct. here thinking how much, how much smarter I think Matt Walsh is than all these people with all these degrees. And, and it, it just like, man, college is really overrated. So a couple of things, Jason, like I'm, I'm, I am very close to where you are, and it's a very big surprise for me for a number of reasons, right? Um, not just because I believe in, in the value of education, and I still do, but for me, education is equal parts scholarship and discipleship, right? It's academic mastery and moral formation. Um, but at one point, I wanted to be a college professor, and I had applied to, I think, three PhD programs right at the point where I met my wife. And it's funny, she said to me, well, we need to be married if you want me to move with you to some other city. And I said, okay, let me speed up my timeline. But I got rejected from all three. And that was probably the best thing that has ever happened to me in my life. One, because I realized I don't need a PhD to write a book or to influence the culture. Um, two, we already have a Dr. Squires in the house. Because when I met my wife, she was finishing her PhD and she finished it at Hampton and I was glad to be there to support her and help her with a dissertation and all that. But the biggest reason is because, as I said, these a lot of these institutions and particularly any of the, the liberal arts majors, the social sciences, anything outside of the hard sciences, these institutions have become playgrounds for some serious mischief. Um, and, and they are turning the minds of these kids inside out and really what the, the education they get equips them to have enough surface level knowledge to justify what, why they want to upend reality. So I'll see this, this happens on Twitter to me all the time. People say, oh, well, well, you don't know the difference between gender and sex. And I'll say, okay, well, explain to me the concept of a female man or a male woman. Or they'll say, 
well, you're not following the advances of sociology and anthropology. And, and I, I just asked them for evidence and they can they can never bring that evidence. But what they have is they think that they're standing on some foundation of, of uh, a higher truth. And what they're trying to do is play God. They, they think both that they have access to higher forms of knowledge and that they can can create reality ex nihilo out of nothing. So if they say and they will that a man can become pregnant, that you have to um, conform to their view. Right. You have to submit to their higher knowledge and and throw away everything that you've known since since you were a child. So if any of my kids wanted to go to any of these institutions, any of the Ivy Leagues to study, you know, any of these social sciences, right, in, in 10, 15 years, I wouldn't pay for it. And and as God is my witness, particularly with my sons, my two sons, I would I would be overjoyed if my sons dis- chose a path as tradesmen, as craftsmen, as carpenters, as, as electricians, as plumbers, men who can do things with their hands. That are, and I, I'm, and this does not mean that men who do that cannot be intelligent because many of them certainly are among the wisest men that I know personally. But I would much rather them be able to say to a prospective wife, you want a house? I can build you a house than to say to a prospective wife, well, I'm not sure which one of us is going to have the baby. Right. So if, it, if it's not if it's not Hillsdale or a handful of a, a, a small number of colleges, as you said, religious colleges, you know, sort of classical, classical colleges. I'm not interested in it. And especially I'm not interested in them going 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars into debt for them to come out with less wisdom and knowledge than their great grandparents had. So, yeah, this this is a problem. It's a problem across the culture. It's it's a it's a extremely significant problem in the black community. But I'll say this. And I said this in my piece because I'm trying to be more positive, Jason. I gave examples of professors who, who to me, are operating in the tradition of sort of that classic black intellectual. Um, I, I quoted from a from a book of essays I have that was published in 1902 of a number of blacks, you know, some classically trained in, in higher education, some not all very intelligent, very wise who understood theology, who understood that any type of racial uplift had to be rooted in morality. Um, And two of the professors I talked about, one of them is at Hampton. She's launching the the National Center on Black Family Life. And she's working, she's going, they're going to be working with churches to equip churches to, to counsel couples, to help them become better parents, to strengthen their marriages. That's the type of thing that particularly HBCUs should be doing, but any institution should be doing. Um, And then another professor who um, has done research on why black men get married. Like that, that type of, that type of scholarship is very rare. It's much easier to find professors who can talk about, you know, liberation through abortion than you can this type of work. So the good news is that there are, there is a remnant who still take their, that their job seriously, who see, who have an obligation to the broader community to use their intellectual gifts for the uplift of of the masses. But as it relates to the people with the most prominent platforms, it's it's a, it's a lot of mischief, chaos, and disorder. Thank you, Delano. Uh, have a Thank great you, Jason. weekend. Uh, I need you guys before you go. Hit that likes button. Hit the likes button before you go. That's the last thing you need to do. Hit the likes, hit the subscribe, hit the notifications, and have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my sister, no relation. We all just want to have freedom. Sitting on a corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back. For freedom, bless. We are living, get back. We are receiving all the seed when we all wanna be free. We want freedom. I just want, I wanna be. I just want, I wanna be. I just. Want.